A crucial part to any game is the controls. The more intuitive and natural you can make them feel, the more satisfying they become to play. But today, I want to cover running, and more specifically, running in a 2D environment. For this, I look at one of my favorite games, Super Mario World, where the controls are just so satisfying to master. It's games like this that are simple enough for a beginner to play, but also complicated enough for a professional to master. This is part 2 out of a 4 part video series where I plan to break down how to create a perfect character controller in Unity. Last week we covered 2D animation, and how to animate running and idle states. We will use this object in our project today, so if you're not familiar with animation or transitions in Unity, I recommend you watching that video first. Using the scene from our last video, you can see I have a character object that transitions from an idle state to a running state whenever I press the direction keys on my keyboard. Currently, this object doesn't move, and that's because we haven't programmed it to do so. To move this object, we're going to apply a force to our rigid body 2D physics component. So the first thing we need to do is add a rigid body 2D to our object. We will use this rigid body 2D as a base to calculate the physics of our object, and then eventually we will reference it when we want to run and jump with our character. Until we set up our ground and collision detection, let's just go ahead and set the gravity to zero and check the box where it says freeze rotation. Then let's go ahead and create a C sharp script to this object called player and then open it in the editor. The first thing I want to do is set up a function to make our character run left and right in our scene. But first, let's define our variables up at the top. The first is a public float for move speed, and the second is a vector 2 for direction. Move speed will be used to control the speed of our movement, so let's just set a default as 10. And to keep things organized, we're going to use a header here called horizontal movement. When you start adding a lot of public variables like we plan on doing, this keeps things organized in our inspector window. So then let's also make a header for components, and let's create a public reference for our rigid body 2D called RB. With that set up, we're going to take our direction reference and define it in our update function. For this, we want to define it as input.getAxisRaw, horizontal for the x value, and vertical for the y value. For those who aren't familiar, this is defined on a scale between negative 1 and positive 1. For horizontal, a negative value is when we are pressing the left direction, a zero value represents an idle position, and a positive value represents the right direction. These values are defined in the project settings in Unity, but by default, this is triggered on the keyboard by either the arrow keys or through WASD keys, and it's also triggered when using an external joystick input. So with our directional input defined, we just need a function to handle the movement of our character. So let's just call this new function move character, and for parameter, let's put a float called horizontal. Then let's reference our rigid body 2D as RB, and let's add a force to our object in the direction that our joystick is pointing. We can do this by multiplying vector2.right by horizontal. Then let's also multiply that by move speed so we control the speed of this force. Lastly, we just need to execute this function in a fixed update function. Since we are dealing with physics here, it's better we place this code in fixed update instead of update, or we could have some runtime issues. So let's go ahead and write the fixed update function, and then inside it, let's put move character. And since we only want to move left and right, we're just going to use the direction.x as a parameter. Then after we save our script and go back into Unity, we just need to drag our rigid body 2D into our inspector reference. Upon pressing play, we should see that we can move our object left and right using our directional inputs. This is cool, but we're not even close to making this perfect yet. But to at least make this more exciting, I'm going to apply my animations to this object. Basically, to summarize from last video, we have two float animation parameters, one for horizontal and one for vertical. The parameters we want to focus on in this video is the horizontal float. Last video we set this equal to the controller's directional input, but we actually want to modify that to equal our player's velocity. So to change this value, let's go back into our script and add an animator reference. Underneath our rigid body 2D reference, let's write public animator, and let's just call this animator. Then in our move character function, let's give our animation parameter a value. So let's go ahead and write animator.setFloat, and for the first parameter, let's write the name of the value we want to set, which happens to be horizontal, and for the value, let's put mathf.abs, and in parentheses put rb.velocity.x. This sets the animation parameter to equal our horizontal velocity. We use mathf.abs so that our value is always positive despite which direction our character is currently moving. And with that set up, if we go back into Unity and assign our animator reference to our animation object and press play, we should see that our values change when we move our character left and right. And in our game view, we can see this also changes our animation from a standing position to a running position. This happens because we set up transitional conditions on each of these animation states, 
For example, in order for our animation to transition to a running state, our horizontal velocity must be greater than 0.5. Everything looks almost right so far when we are running from left to right, but when we try to run left, our character appears to be running backwards. This can easily be solved by rotating our 2D object 180 degrees on the Y axis. So let's go back in our script and fix this with code. First, we need to know which direction our character is currently facing, so we will use a boolean for this. So underneath where we define direction, let's write private bool, and then let's call this facing right. And since our character starts off facing in the right direction at the start of the scene, let's set this to true by default. Then let's create a function to call whenever we want to flip directions, and let's just call this flip. Whenever we call this function, we want to set our facing right value to false if it is true, and true if it is false. We can do this easily by setting it equal to the opposite value, and to get the opposite value of a boolean, we just need to put an exclamation point in front of it. Then, we need to set the rotation of our character to either 0 or 180, depending on which side it is facing. So let's set transform.rotation equal to quarterneon.euler, which lets us set the value in degrees, and we'll use a shorthand if statement to find whether we want the value to be 0 or 180 degrees. If facing right is true, it will set the y-axis to 0, and if it's false, it will set the y-axis to 180. Then lastly, we just need to declare this in our move character function whenever we change directions. So to do that, we are going to use an if statement. So if horizontal is greater than zero and the character is not facing right, or horizontal is less than zero and the character is facing right, then we should define our flip function. This basically means if we are pointing our inputs in the opposite direction our character is facing, then we need to flip it. And then a quick test in Unity shows us that our character now faces the direction we are pointing with our joystick. So now the next logical step would be to set up collision detection for our character so that we can't run through walls. Now for some reason it's recommended that you use a Capsule Collider 2D here, but I actually don't like doing that. The reason for that is when combined with a tile map and when gravity is enabled, as our character starts to run, we have this issue where our collider intersects with the seams in the tiles and makes our character hop up in the air. Obviously this is not the effect we want. Instead I like to use an Edge Collider 2D and what I do is usually draw a rectangle with it and then I make the endpoints of this edge collider in the shape of a V so they meet in a place where they won't be in any collision. And now when we run there isn't any hopping around. We just run on a smooth surface. So now the next thing we want to focus on is improving the running. Currently our object just slides around and the more we run the faster our object goes. So the first thing we want to do is set a limit on our horizontal velocity. And back in our script let's create a reference for our max speed but let's place this under a new header called physics. Then let's write public float max speed, and let's just set this to seven as a default. We will then make sure our velocity never exceeds this value. So in our move character function at the bottom, let's create an if statement to check for exactly that. So go ahead and write if mathf.abs, and in parentheses, let's put rb.velocity.x, which is equal to our horizontal velocity, and then let's check to see if it is greater than max speed. If it is, let's change the value of our velocity. So let's write rb.velocity equals new vector 2, and then let's write max speed for our x parameter, and for our y parameter, we don't want to alter our vertical velocity, so let's just put rb.velocity.y. Now since a positive velocity value moves objects to the right, we want to factor in both directions. We can do this by writing mathf.sign, and in parentheses putting rb.velocity.x. By definition, this gives us a negative one, zero, or positive one value. So now if we multiply by max speed, we will cap out our max speed no matter which direction we are traveling. So now let's test this in Unity. And based on the values in our animator window, we can see that our character never exceeds a horizontal velocity of seven. Feel free to adjust this value to allow your character to move faster or slower. Now to make this running absolutely perfect, I developed a technique I wanna share with you. In my experimentation, I struggled finding the perfect move speed that would imitate the look of running without making my character feel like he was sliding on ice. Then I found a cool little trick that solved this problem for me. When I'm running back and forth, I can add a linear drag to stop the sliding, but then this makes my character extremely sluggish when I try and pick up speed again. So what I decided to do instead was alter these values at runtime. So under our physics header, let's create a new float for linear drag and set the default value to four. Then let's create a new function for modifying our physics called modify physics and let's declare this in our fixed update function. And then basically all we want to do is apply this linear drag whenever our directional input value is less than 
Remember, this value is on a scale between negative 1 for left and positive 1 for right, so a number less than that means we don't want to move at full speed. So we can check that by writing if mathf.abs and in parentheses write direction.x and then less than 0.4. If it's true, let's set rb.drag equal to linear drag. And then let's create an else statement that sets rb.drag back to 0. So when we play with these values in Unity, we can now pick up speed rather quickly, and when we release our directional input, our character comes to an immediate halt. This works great except when we try and change directions. When this happens, our character slides for a while before moving in the opposite direction, which feels a little unnatural. So to fix this, first I need to create a boolean that detects when we are changing directions. This occurs when our directional input is opposite of our velocity. So let's write direction.x is greater than 0, and rb.velocity.x is less than 0. And then let's wrap this in parentheses and put an or statement to check the other direction. So let's write direction.x is less than 0, and rb.velocity is greater than 0. So with that defined, we need to just simply adjust our if statement below to check if we also change directions to then apply our linear drag. And that's basically it for this video. You should be able to copy this code to any character, and with the right tweaking of these settings, your character should be able to move around smoothly around the scene. Although stay tuned for next week, where we take this character controller and modify it to detect ground collision, so then we can program our character to jump around the scene.